Hello, everybody. Um, uh, my name is Asma Abdelbeki. I did my PhD at Trier University under the Department of Environmental Remote Sensing. Uh, and I, today I would like to present part of PhD research project with the title of uh, the retrieval of, retri uh, of crop traits using the advanced remote sensing technique. Um, so this presentation uh, contains the background, research problems, um, the thesis statement, uh, and contributing uh, contribution outcome and the conclusion. Uh, crop conditions is a reflection of prevailing the climate conditions. So monitoring the crop conditions is an important aspect of uh, agriculture management, which allows uh, the farmers to uh, to implement uh, timely uh, inter interventions um, uh, to ensure the, the maximum yield at the end of the season. But um, but uh, there are some stress factors such as the uh, the drought or heat temperature and nutrient uh, deficiency and uncontrol of using the chemical and bacterial infection. All these factors may uh, cause a reduction in the crop productivity in terms of the quality and the quantity, resulting in, an, in a progressive burden on the ecosystem. To characterize the crop, we uh, we can use the physiological and phenological traits. So in this research, I was focusing only in the leaf area index and fraction vegetation canopy chlorophyll content uh, or chlorophyll content. These variables is uh, always used in many agriculture applications. So leaf area index is, uh, uh, is a biophysical parameter used for uh, characterizing the, the, the uh, characterizing the crop physiology. Uh, and forecasting the crop, uh, the crop growth. Fraction vegetation is another biophysical parameter and it gives an idea about the intensity rate of vegetative growth. Canopy chlorophyll content or chlorophyll content is a biochemical parameter and used for, uh, it's essential, uh, it is used for photosynthesis and can be uh, used for, uh, serve as a, to measure the, the content of nitrogen in the plant. To quantify these uh, traits, uh, there are two ways. One way is called uh, the destructive methods, which is mainly rely on the uh, in the in the in the lab, in the laboratory stuff. And second is a non-destructive method. Remote sensing is a, a non-destructive method, and to obtain the the remote sensing data, different platforms have been used starting from the satellite to UAV, and each of these platform can be uh, employed to obtain the, the image with the specific characteristic and selecting this image depends on the applications. So remote sensing data uh, or images uh, can provide us a valuable information about the crop, especially for the farmer uh, to monitor the land throughout the cropping system. Uh, before uh, in this sketch, I would like to illustrate uh, the general concept of remote sensing. Here you can see the the, the light coming from the sun hits uh, the object, uh, could be the plant or the soil. So uh, this uh, light can be absorbed by a plant and the other part translated and the rest will be uh, reflected. Uh, uh, in optical remote sensing, the sensor uh, can be recorded the reflected radiation, which contain the meaningful information. So you will see here, this is a typical, in the left figure, it's uh, showing that the typical spectral curve of vegetation. This curve is divided into three parts. First part for visible domain region, which is uh, governed by leaf pigment, and one of them is chlorophyll content. The metal part is the near infrared, which is dominated by the leaf structure. Uh, and for example, like leaf area index and fraction vegetation cover. The last part is a swell, um, is a short wave infrared swell and, and dominated by the leaf biochemical, including the water content. Um, since uh, since uh, the optical remote sensing cannot drive it directly uh, to obtain the, uh, the canopy traits. So uh, diversity of retrieval methods have been introduced. So from that figure, you can see the historical development of uh, retrieval methods. 
in 1970, the empirical method was uh, appeared. So uh, this method is uh, just uh, used for extracting the pattern from the database or data set. So uh, this method, many research, it's really widely used by researcher because of the easy to implement and, and rely on the ground data. But uh, this is uh, one weakness because of uh, this method cannot be transferable to any other location or any, or any other sensor configuration. Therefore, the radiative transfer model have been developed in 1980. And this model is uh, mathematical, uh, rely on the mathematical and the equations uh, that simulates uh, the description uh, of the, the interaction between the, the solar radiation and the canopy. And you can see here uh, there are different models used for describing the leaf optical properties and the canopy structures. So, um, and each of these module or each of this model rely on their own assumptions. So for instance, the turbid medium model is assumed that in the canopy is horizontal in, uh, in, in the, it's homogeneous in the horizontal directions. But for geometrical model, uh, it describes the canopy as a geometric uh, shape. So which is count the, the scattering and uh, the shadowing scheme. Hybrid model is a combination of both model. So uh, the best example of hybrid model is uh, which I'm using in this research is uh, soil leaf canopy model radiative transfer. This model has been uh, created in 2013 by Valf and Bach. Uh, and uh, this model consists of three submodules. Uh, one for uh, four cell, two is used for uh, uh, for describing the canopy structures and prospect for leaf and Hapka model for the uh, describing the soil properties and including the soil mature. And this uh, model is just uh, used for simulating the reflectance from the soil and the leaf and the canopy. To invert this model or any radiative transfer model, there are different algorithms that have been used. And one common example, we often use the local table and uh, machine learning. Uh, as well as the uh, numerical optimization technique and the data assimilation. What is the problem if we use the uh, inversion method? Often we know it's a uh, hypotenuse problem. It's hypotenuse problem. It's it raises when the result or the solution is not unique, or not stable, or exists. So, for example, if you have a uh, um, different uh, different. Uh, different in, uh, input parameter or different combination of input parameter uh, often gives the same similar uh, reflectance and that all of them, they are close to uh, the, uh, the measured uh, reflectance. So uh, that is doesn't, this is doesn't help to obtain the accurate results. So from here we can see what are the factors can influence on the accuracy of estimated variables. So we have three factors the type of radiative transfer model, what you used for a specific crop, and the quality of the model simulation. Second, the robustness of retrieval method. Third, the quality of radiometric data. To increase the retrieval methods, the robustness of retrieval method, there are different regularization techniques have been proposed, such as the period knowledge, multiple bit solution Gaussian noise, and the variable constraint as special and temporal constraint. Uh, most of these uh, techniques I have been applied in my PhD research. And it, uh, if these techniques is uh, suggested to mitigate the problem uh, of ill bonus problem, and then it consequently will increase the accuracy of estimates. So what is the general, uh, what is the object of this research? And so the general goal is uh, I would like to uh, improve the accuracy of estimates. That is done by developing the lookup table approach, which is the basis for any inversion process and uh, evaluated against the other standard retrieval method using the hyperspectral remote sensing data. So this objective, to achieve that, we specified three uh, objectives. Uh, in this presentation, I will talk only about the two objectives, and these uh, these objectives have been published. And before we talk about this objective, uh, which uh, I will give, I would like to give the overview about the experiment because both of them rely on this experiment. Uh, so the study area, uh, the, the 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 experiment is done in the southwest of Luxembourg. 
So uh, the field uh, is, uh, the field experiment was set up in 2016, and this area was plant was cultivated was planted by a potato crop. This crop was treated by different level of nitrogen. Uh, as you can see here, the red uh, boxes it's showing that the, the low level of uh, nitrogen rate of application. This is the black box showing the standard rate of nitrogen and the blue plots showing the over fertilizations. So uh, in total, we have uh, 27 plots uh, uh, for these dates. So the, the field was done for six observation dates. So for each date, we have 20 samples. So uh, for each plot, uh, uh, for each plot here, we uh, did a ground measurement. And you can see here from this uh, uh, graph, uh, this is uh, the, the showing that the, all the measurements is done in the center of the plot and uh, showing the, the locations where we did the measurement. So uh, this location of, uh, we measured the, the location of measuring the leaf area index and also the, the, the ASCD measurement, which is used for measuring the canopy reflectance. Beside that, we measured the leaf area index using the LAI and uh, 2000 plant canopy analyzer, and also we measured leaf chlorophyll content and also the fraction vegetation cover. And let's start with the first paper. So the title is uh, Introduction of the Variable Correlation for Improved Retrieval of Crop Traits Using the Canopy Reflectance Model. What is the research questions? To what extent does integrating the correlation structure of collected variable into the lookup table using the SLC model improves the retrieval of LAI and fraction vegetation cover? To be aware that the analysis of that paper is done only for one season uh, under the perfect weather condition using the ASD hyperspectral data. So what is the concept of this paper? We are uh, giving here the simple flow chart. So in the field work, we measured three variables. Uh, and we found that two variables, LAI and fraction vegetation cover, have a high strong correlations in the study area. So we want to uh, use this information or reflect it into the model. So uh, how we do that, uh, all the inputs on uh, any rotated time scale models, uh, you will see all the inputs, is, they are independent of each other, so which is not realistic. So we want to, uh, we suggested to use the uh, Kolatsky methods into the model to intercorrelate the leaf area index and the crown cover. And we use these variables uh, for, uh, to intercorrelate them since uh, they are a basis for quantifying the fraction vegetation cover. You have to be aware also the SLC model, it reads the fraction vegetation cover as an output, not as an input. Then uh, this is the way how we modified the lookup table, uh, which is called as a regularized lookup table. And uh, we compare the result from this type of lookup table with the uh, with standard one, which doesn't consider any correlation. Okay, so let's start with the fifth outcome here. Uh, before we did any inversion, um, you can see uh, if, you if you do any plot between any input parameters, you will see there is no any correlations. That is a typical for a standard lookup table. And after you add the uh, Kolaski method, so you will see here there is a correlation between variable and you will see what it, and the R square was 0.75. And after we did the inversion and we want to see how is the, the correlation between the estimated variables and you will see here the, the R square is still high and the method was able to still correlate them well as compared to the standard lookup table. So when we validate this result with the ground data, you will see the regularized lookup table uh, was able to uh, increase the accuracy uh, um, uh, of LAI uh, in terms of R square and normalized Wooten square. And also when we, we plot the variance of estimated variable obtained from two type of lookup table, you will see here from the part plot, the orange plot, is, which is represent the regularized lookup table, is giving the lower variance than the standard one, which is the pro bar. And uh, these, uh, uh, and you will see uh, when the, the estimated uh, LAI have a low variance, which means that there is low errors, 
and means that also the value start to be closer to the true value. On other hand, for fraction presentation copper, we couldn't able to see any uh, improvement. Uh, nevertheless, we see in the uh, in the bar plot for estimating the variance, still the regularized lookup table, the orange bars, giving a lower variance or lower error than the standard one, uh, except for some plots. And the reason behind that in the fraction vegetation cover is not only rely on the leaf area index and the crown cover, it's also rely on another, another parameter, which is called leaf inclination distribution function. And this parameter, uh, we doesn't measure it in the field. Uh, we didn't measure it in the field at that time. So we use the fixed value when we do the modeling. So that is, might be cause uh, or <clears throat> might be contribute some uncertainty in the estimations. So for the, let's go for the second paper or the third objective. Uh, the title is uh, the comparison of the crop traits retrieval strategy using the UAP based on hyperspectral images. What is the research question of this paper? So what is the performance of the statistical and physical and the hybrid method when we uh, obtain the UAV data occurred under the variable illumination condition throughout the growing season for LAI and fraction vegetation and canopy chlorophyll content estimation. So uh, in this paper, we applied the analysis for a whole growing season of potato not only for one season. So this is uh, how we did the analysis of this paper. So first, we uh, the UAV image was uh, occurred in uh, for uh, was occurred in 2016 at the same time with the ground measurement. When we measured the ground, uh, and these images uh, it was done during the six flight missions. And this image was okay using the, the Oxy Gamaya camera uh, or Gamaya sensor. And this sensor was contained two camera uh, for visible part and for near infrared part. And uh, each of this image, uh, each of this, uh, each of these images uh, has a uh, 41 bands uh, with the spectral resolutions, uh, 10 nanometer. Uh, which is covering uh, and the spectral was covered between the the range of spectral was covered between the 474 nanometer plus the 1915 uh, nanometer, and this images was pre-processed by uh, um, by a Gamaya company, and uh, part of this was done in Trier. So uh, besides, we did some pre-processing such as the the uh, radiometric and geometric calibration. We also did uh, spectral uh, shift corrections. Uh, uh, that's uh, why we did that when we figured in there's still some shift between the, the UAV spectral and the ASD measurement. And this is because uh, some overlapping uh, uh, bands uh, coming from the Gamaya sensor. So uh, to correct that, we use some method like uh, which is called uh, spline interpolation. This is which is rely on a, on a specific uh, feature in the spectra uh, to uh, to do this kind of shifting, and then we could be able to uh, correct the, the spectra of UAV, and then we can be able to use it in the modeling. So. Uh, we divided the, the analysis in this paper into three tasks. First task, we did a, a lookup table based inversion. So we compared two type of lookup tables as we did in the first paper. So the regularized lookup table was relying on Kuleski method, but instead of intercorrelate only two variables, we correlate the three variable. Um, and the result of this, uh, from this lookup table was compared also with the standard, and then we, uh, then we could be able to estimate the variable. This is the first uh, analysis. Second analysis, we use a hybrid inversion model, which is uh, rely on the using the machine learning algorithm for training the lookup table. The last uh, analysis, which is the, the statistical model, uh, which is using the random forest and that's rely on the ground data. So all these three analysis was used for estimating the, the, the canopy traits. 
Uh, and then we validate this result with the ground measurement and the best approach was used for mapping the canopy traits. So the first, the first outcome of the, from the first analysis, so you could see here um, the, the regularized lookup table, the result from regularized lookup table, especially for LAI and the canopy chlorophyll content delivering high accuracy than the standard one. Uh, as well as also for fraction vegetation cover, about the improvement is not significant as we see, but still there is somehow a small improvement. So uh, this is based on the analysis, the data was classified under the different level of nitrogen. So uh, second outcome, we compared the, the, the result from regularized lookup table with uh, hybrid uh, models. So we used the only three methods. So we found the Gaussian process was the best for estimating the leaf area index and the random forest was uh, delivering the best result for fraction vegetation cover and the conical correlation forest is used for measuring the canopy chlorophyll content. And you could see the accuracy uh, for regularized lookup table was uh, outperforming than the other one. That is uh, because uh, it, uh, the, the difference, uh, you can see here there is not so much difference of the accuracy, but uh, this difference uh, might be because of the, uh, the, the way how we uh, parameterize the input of machine learning. So that's why you can see some differences, but in, uh, if we took a look in generally, all the patterns they are the follow the same. So you can see the underestimation phenomena, it appear at the late stage of the crop. That is because for uh, leaf rendement, because of the saturation effect, and for fraction vegetation cover, it's because of the, the plant to stop being completely cover the soil. So um, the last step of analysis, we assess the information on the illumination conditions during the image uh, acquisition can improve the, the accuracy of estimates. So you will see here and from this table, this is the flight uh, conditions and the camera settings. So we have the six observation dates through the growing season of the crop. And uh, under, uh, under, under this condition, we will see the illumination was completely varied. So we have only one date is completely sunny uh, and the other date was cloudy. So uh, the last date, uh, the last information is the uh, exposure time. The exposure time, it's, uh, it's a setting, uh, it's the one setting of camera. So it's just a matter of, uh, it's just a value to showing the, the time length when the, the image uh, inside the camera exposed to the light. You will see in the visible part and also the near, the value in the visible part higher than the near. So we have to keep this information in our minds. We'll see here that the table contains uh, the result of different retrieval, uh, the comparison from different retrieval methods. So in the first two column, you, uh, the hybrid and regularized lookup table, generally the regularized lookup table was more successful or most, uh, giving more uh, higher result than the hybrid one. But if you compare it with a pure completely statistical method, it gives a higher result, which is expected because it's rely on the ground data, but uh, the, uh, the previous methods was relying on the modeling. Uh, therefore, we, but our objective in this, uh, in this analysis, we want to increase the accuracy, especially for the cloudy dates. So we suggested to add the uh, exposure time values as an explanatory variable in the statistical model. So you can see here, all the accuracy start be uh, increased, especially for the dates when it's, uh, especially for the image when it's, comple it's uh, affected completely by the clouds or partially, okay? And uh, then the, uh, uh, the best approach with this statistical model, we use it at the end for generating the, uh, for generating maps of canopy tree. So, uh, these maps uh, representing the leaf area index and kind of a chlorophyll and fraction vegetation. And we, to make it more visualized for the, for the reader, we select uh, three plots, uh, which is representing different level of nitrogen. So you can see here the black uh, plots 
showing the, the plot with a high level of nitrogen uh, was more green than the plot with a low rate or with the standard rates, 180. So this observation you will see in the same for other maps. To conclude our work, we found out the, the regularized local people was able to mitigate the impostness problem if we consider the, uh, the variable correlation uh, obtained from the ground measurement. Second, the UAV uh, images uh, were able to deliver a good result even though you take the images under the cloud conditions. Third, the hybrid uh, model uh, based on the machine learning was uh, rapidly able to invert the vegetation attributes as compared to a uh, local table approach. And that is, uh, that's mean that in the, the hybrid inversion method, it's uh, perfectly if you would like to generate a vegetation map on the global scale. And before we ending this presentation, I would like to highlight three points that maybe uh, uh, kind of remarks to for next study to be aware of this. First, we want to uh, be careful and you have to measure the leaf ingenuation distribution function in the field. Uh, that is uh, important also required for improving the accuracy of fraction vegetation cover, especially if you use the SLC model. Second highlight, we, uh, if you, it would be worthwhile if you uh, try to evaluate the full correlation matrix between the input uh, variables in uh, our radiative transfer model or any transfer, in any transfer, transfer, radiative transfer model to decrease the uncertainty of retrieval. So last highlight, uh, the pre-processing of UAV based on hyperspectral data is, is really sensitive to the environmental condition, especially like our case when the images is affected by the clouds. Thank you for all the audience and welcome for any questions.